Yeah, doing. This is Cammy. Cammy. She's six weeks old. I'm uh. done. Why do they look so real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean why they look so old? I mean, they're dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs do look weird up close, right? How old that one is? This one's six weeks, and six. so is the other one. Oh yeah. If she was any older, she'd be a lot bigger and a lot heavier. How much she weigh? A little too much right now. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'd say about good. Oh, you're hefty, girl. About 20, <laughs> 25 pounds, maybe. All right. All so right. they grow up to be a lot larger. All You'll right. see her mom out there. Okay. Why are they actually like their wheels? They want to make kids' face. They want to keep you entertained, girl. That's why. To pay full attention to the driving path. This is scary. As well as the distance right. to the cars ahead. I don't like the sound. Please observe our five mile per hour speed limit. Mm. The really? only time you should leave your vehicle is at our designated restroom area. Our dinosaurs may seem scary, uh -huh. but don't worry. We have a perfect track record of zero oh, dinosaurs. We had Jurassic Quest. Um, this week's. So what is this crap? Well, I think you guys are ready for your Jurassic Quest. And we're not. Are you Please pause the and audio I? until you reach the first scene. <laughs> I'm prehistoric. <laughs> Fossil expert uh, here at Jurassic. This is an ammonite. What you're looking at is the Triassic period. The Triassic started about 251 million years ago at the end of another period that we call the Permian. One of the earliest dinosaurs that we know of was Eoraptor. Its name means dog fish. thief because it lived at the dawn of the age of dinosaurs. Eoraptor made its home in what is now Argentina about 231 million years ago. Besides that, it's a kind of skinny dinosaur named Acelophysis. Its name means hollow form because they had hollow sacks of air in their joints instead of cartilage. Acelophysis is the oldest known dinosaur from North America. And here is a large predator known as Herrera. What's this guy named? Jade? Look at Jade. <laughs> Jade, get up. That lived in the Triassic period. <laughs> it was the West Coast about 231 million years ago. Hey there, folks, this is Safari Sarah. The Triassic period was the dawn of the age of dinosaurs, That's but it big. too had to come to an end. Just a little over 200 million years ago, the Earth encountered another mass extinction. Oh, it was supposed to be, be time in this an an It's a press pause now. Well, I guess we, we wait it past it. Already, so. the of that lived in the Triassic period. <laughs> it was the worst the scarf on about 231 million years ago. <laughs> hey there, folks. This is Safari Sarah. The Triassic period was the dawn of the age of dinosaurs, That's but it big. too had to come to an end. Just a little over 200 million years ago, the Earth encountered another mass. Right. What's the Halloween? Captain Caleb here. I hope up? your auto insurance huh? covers water damage because in order to get into the sleeping? Jurassic we were period, we're diving deep into the Jurassic Ocean. The big shell you see oh, we passed is that part already. It's a little late. Ammonites are cephalopods. That means they are relatives of the squid, octopus, and nautilus. Shells protected. You try to speed it up, Mostly small predators. But as time went by, some Cephalosaurus ah. eventually became a bit bigger. Specifically, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, Where? The big, long-necked dinosaur in this scene is a Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus is what we call a sauropod or a long-necked dinosaur. Sauropods were the biggest animals to ever Dilophosaurus. Or possibly to hold on to a stegosaurus's tail to avoid getting hit. That's a stegosaurus right here. The little guys in the scene are called Guanlong. They're an early right member right? of the Ceolosaur family that lived in what is now China. The Ceolosaur family was made up of mostly small predators. But as time went by, some Ceolosaurs eventually became a bit bigger. Specifically, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Y'all recording? The big, long necked dinosaur in this scene is a Patasaurus. A Patasaurus is what we call a sauropod. Lived in what is now China. 
The Ceolosaur family hey. was made up of mostly small predators. But as time went by, some Ceolosaurs eventually became a bit well, bigger. Specifically, well. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, I see the tongue on that thing in the teeth. The big, long-necked dinosaur in this scene is a Patasaurus. Look at the baby. Patasaurus is what we call Oh, both my babies. <laughs> long-necked dinosaur. Wow, wow, wow. One of the biggest animals to ever walk on Earth. I think hairy. In order to get that big, sauropods had to eat all the time. Right, like they're close to, to the to even the, more. To the these thing, long neck right. giants didn't even waste time chewing, but swallowed the leaves yeah, for trees. But they had a big special daddy. trick to no, help them digest their food. Sauropods would sometimes crane their long necks down to the ground and swallow small stones. Those rocks would help them grind up their food once it was inside. You can Those see it, Livia? are called gastroliths, or stomach rocks in Latin. These gastroliths are really? that colored rough. <sighs> the thrill is seen in other creatures when frightened, like a frilled neck lizard or a white boris. A patasaurus is what we that call a, a sauropod, yeah, or a long necked dinosaur. Sauropods were the biggest animals to ever walk on Earth. In order to get that big, sauropods had to eat all the time. Yeah, slow it up, right? To eat even more, these long neck giants didn't even waste time down, chewing, okay. but swallowed the leaves from trees whole. But they had a special trick to help them digest their food. Sauropods would sometimes crane their long necks down to the ground and swallow small stones. Those rocks would help them grind up their food once it was inside. Those rocks are called gastroliths or stomach rocks. Oh, like. These gastroliths are oh, oh, super important it, yeah, yeah. because they help scientists to learn the migration patterns of these dinosaurs. By matching the gastroliths back to the look, areas where the right rocks now. originally came from. You ready, Jay? You started it. Please pause your audio tour Iguana until dog. your dinosaur herd migrates on up to the next scene. Should we at? Iguana Safari dog. Sarah here yeah, right? again. After the end of the Jurassic, we find ourselves in the early Cretaceous period. The Cretaceous baby, you got was leech. the longest Look. of the three periods of the Mesozoic. <laughs> the Cretaceous period saw all kinds of strange new life forms, including weird new plants that we call flowers. We're starting off in what is now England during the early Cretaceous, roughly 120 million Look. years ago. The duck-billed dinosaur you see is what we call an iguanodon, and it's one of the first dinosaurs so to be discovered right and now. named. Some of you might have already guessed I that iguanodon means iguana tooth. Hippos when iguanodon was discovered in England, no one had ever even heard of dinosaurs yet. So when it came time to name this bizarre new animal, the only similarities anyone could think of were that its teeth kind of look like the teeth of an iguana, only bigger. Wow. The very first drawings of Iguanodon depicted it as a giant iguana-like creature. Please stay in your the the animal it's next to is Baryonyx. Baryonyx was a carnivore, and specifically, it ate fish. We know that it ate fish because when the first Baryonyx skeleton was found in England in the 1980s, it had fossilized fish bones and fish scales inside of its belly, along with its new bones. Since it lived in what is now England, as one of its last meals was fish, this could be That's the nice. earliest evidence of anyone in the UK ordering fish and chips. Our quest has now taken us from Europe yeah, Harry, to Harry Lane. Asia, still in the early Cretaceous. The big dinosaur here is look, 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 see the Tyrannus is part of the Tyrannosauridae family. That means it's a relative of the T-Rex. Eutyrannus lived in the Leoning province the camera of China. Running? What makes Eutyrannus uh -huh. special is that it is the largest dinosaur that we know of with feathers. We know that Eutyrannus had feathers because of where and when it lived. About 120 car. million years ago, a volcanic eruption blanketed much of the Leoning province with hot ash. Like what happened at Pompeii thousands of years ago. While that was devastating to the animals at that them. time, it's great for hairy? paleontologists because it preserved oh, soft tissue, birds. in some cases, like feathers including feathers. <laughs> Hi, it's Park Ranger Marty again. 
and welcome to the hey. early Cretaceous North America. And a spider. Look at the spider. furry guy is Utah Raptor. Oh, we just now let's that. see. Can anyone guess where Utah Raptor was discovered? That's right. Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Just kidding, folks. Utah oh. Raptor was found in Utah. Utah Raptor is the largest known member of the Seat. Raptor family. Now behind him is a predator named Seat. Uh, Seat is a massive predator that lived at the end of the early Cretaceous. It's crazy, Jay. Little is known about Seat due to how recent of a discovery it is. But it is thought to be a member of the Allosauridae group that lived into the early Cretaceous. Seat has lived in North America at about the same time as some members of the Tyrannosaur family. But those Tyrannosaurs didn't get any larger than about the size of a Great Dane because the alpha predator role had already been killed by Seat. It wasn't until Seats went extinct that larger Tyrannosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus rex, took the stage. Also in this scene, you'll see Deinonychus, or Deinonychus. The name means terrible claw because of the sickle-like claws on its toes. If you've ever seen a movie that had a dinosaur called Velociraptor, there's a good chance it was actually a Deinonychus. And the director just thought that Velociraptor sounded good. pause when they come up to this pause it. When they start off, hold on. Make sure to pause your audio tour until you reach our next dinosaur scene. Can you guess what it is? Tyrannosaurus? Did you say Spinosaurus? Spinosaurus. You got it. Spinosaurus is one of the well. largest carnivores to ever walk It's there, well, Jay. You deaf? Thank you. But it mostly ate fish. We know that because Spinosaurus's teeth have been found embedded in fossilized bones of a large fish. Although they have also been found that thing in bones big. of dinosaurs. Spinosaurus is a creature that was a mystery for a long time. Spinosaurus. Its fossils were discovered in 1912 but they were destroyed during World War II when the museum they were in was hit during a bombing raid. It wasn't until the 1990s when Spinosaurus's fossils were rediscovered. In fact, we've learned more about the Spinosaurus in the last 20 years than we have in the last century. We now know that Spinosaurus was a massive predator that lived in and out of the water in marshy waterways of what we now know to be Northern Africa, preying on fish Spinosaurus. the size is it right? of a car. Spinosaurus it was. Hey Dustin, is this a secure line? Sure, uh, I think. Uh, I just turned off the mic. Yeah, they definitely can't hear us now. What's up? I just noticed that the T-Rexes aren't in their areas. <laughs> Do you know if they've been moved to another location? Hmm, I haven't heard anything about moving them anywhere. They should okay, both be there. The same world, the I can check in with Nick and Marty see if they know anything driving. about this. That would be great. I'll organize a search. We need to find them soon, but we cannot. Yeah, yeah we got to plan on the right thing. Let's keep this on the down low. Roger that. that. We're moving through time again, folks. Welcome to the late Cretaceous. Oh, we on the Spinosaurus we just saw spent a lot of time in and around water, and that's where we're going. Welcome to the Western Interior Seaway. That's a shallow sea from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean the Cretaceous period. See you later. The Great Plains of what is now the United States and Canada used to be underwater. Lots of marine fossils are found in places like Kansas. The first See, creature up a here is the long-necked no, Lassosaurus. Like it's a relative of the Plesiosaurus, but much like for one one. Also, while doing so, be sure to stay inside your vehicles for the duration of the tour. The, 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 All of these aquatic creatures, the, 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 the last the, thing you want to do is get your phone. Hey, Marty. It's Dustin. All right, you can play. I have I'll a catch up question now. here, and don't freak out, but... Have you seen the T-Rexes? Well, they were in the enclosure an hour ago when I went in to feed them. No, 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 no. Are they not still there? We have a tour headed that way right now. Okay, um, sorry, I hate to ask you this, but you didn't happen to turn off the invisible fence, did you? Or they get to the tour? Hey, what's up, you all right back there? I'm sorry, Dustin. I didn't yeah, mean to cause any trouble. Sorry, you alright? You never do, Marty. You never do. Triceratops, stop. 
the audio tour until you reach the next scene. So you're yeah, right. I'm definitely good. Welcome back to Asia in yeah, Lake Cretaceous so. Period. Asia. Wow, what a, Here we have three kinds person. of dinosaurs from Mongolia, starting with the. Asia. Despite what you may have seen in movies, Velociraptor is not six feet tall, but actually about three feet tall, six feet long, and about 20 to 30 pounds. Just think of an extra scary turkey. Uh, we also know that at least one Velociraptor attacked a Protoceratops, the next dinosaur in this scene. This is thanks to the fossil of a Velociraptor and Protoceratops found, who died still locked in combat. The Protoceratops broke the Velociraptor's arm with its powerful beak, Moments before, yeah, they were not, both not, uh, buried in sand yeah. by a landslide. The other dinosaur in the scene, Oviraptor, has an unfortunate name, meaning egg thief. When this dinosaur was discovered, it was found over a nest of eggs thought to belong to Protoceratops. This one with the eggs right here. Right. Uh, the audio, audio went over already. Turkey storage. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. After later research, scientists realized it was sitting on a nest of its own eggs. But the name stuck and is still debated if Oviraptor actually ate eggs. Here at Jurassic Quest, ours take theirs sunny side up every morning for breakfast. Yet another dinosaur from Mongolia is the large Therizinosaurus you see here with the long claws. The claws on its hands could grow up to three feet long, making them the longest claws in the animal kingdom. Most of what we know about Therizinosaurus comes from animals closely related to it. The only fossils we have of this animal are its shoulders, arms, and hands. It is believed to be an herbivore, but we are still looking for more fossils to know for sure. The dinosaur next to it is a Lorotitan, lived in what is now Eastern Russia. It's in a special group of duck-billed dinosaurs called Lambiosaurus, which are famous for the elaborate crests on their heads. These crests would have certainly served as display structures, but may also have been used in oh, some dinosaurs as resonating chambers to make sounds used to communicate effectively through the herd. Rawr. Speaking of communication, I've been directed to ask you all to keep an eye out for any free-roaming dinosaurs that may or may not be wandering around the park. Hi, Park Ranger Marty here. Come on, Marty. You're not mad at me about accidentally releasing the T-Rexes. Anyway, in this scene, you see Xianchusaurus. Xianchusaurus is a tyrannosaur from China and is closely related to see his hands from Mongolia. See the claws on the Both have awfully long, narrow noses for members of the tyrannosaur family. We're not sure what those noses may have been used for. Maybe to cut through water, making them faster, more accurate fishermen, or maybe they were specializing in smaller, faster prey, not needing the powerful bite of a T-Rex. Speaking of which, if you see one of them, please let one of our four security officers know. Well, we got one right here, Mr. Marty. Just only described this dinosaur in 2014, so there's still a lot of unanswered questions about it. Yeah, yeah, recording. This much. In the United States, we do not typically refer to this dinosaur as Shiantrosaurus. We typically just call it Pinocchio Rex. Pinocchio Rex. Now we travel to Argentina. Those the T-Rex. The big animal you see in this scene is Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus. Arguably one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs. Though it may look a lot like T-Rex, it's actually a much different animal. Oh yeah? Unlike a T-Rex, it has three claws on each hand, a lighter bone structure, and teeth that were designed for slicing. Unlike a T-Rex's, which were 
Rushing through bones. I think eat a whole and body. I think. Car tops open. River car tops open. Uh, speaking of which, if you see one of our missing T Rexes, please let one of our three security guards know where. What y'all gonna do for us? Well, second largest in this scene is Carnotaurus, which means meat eating bull because of peculiar horns on its head. It might have used its horns as a weapon against other predators. It's a very funny looking dinosaur. Not just because of the horns, but because of its tiny little arms. Ah, Carnotaurus is on. one of the smallest arms of any known dinosaur. Even smaller than the T-Rex. The small dinosaur you see in this scene is Alversaurus. A small, fast predator that lived in Argentina during the late Cretaceous period. It's believed to have eaten insects. Now. Welcome to the duck bill dynasty. The dinosaur with the long crest on the back of its head is called Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus is a hadrosaur, a family of dinosaurs me. This not sometimes it. called no, duck bill dinosaurs because bit. of the shape of their snouts. Uh, Other hadrosaurs and well, you can let it play then, I got you, okay? It's, it's, it's how I get to that one, she cut off this one. Because it's, it's going to go back to this one. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, it. There's so many dinosaurs. Food Iguanodon, Aranosaurus, Allura Titan, and Edmontosaurus, among many others. Parasaurolophus is a cool dinosaur because it's one of the few dinosaurs where we know what they might have sounded like. Ooh, Paleontologists one discovered one. that huh? by looking at the crest that's on its head. Huh? That's, that's what they found yeah, were put that one next. inside going back and forth between the nasal passage and the throat. When they recreated blowing air through their tubes, they discovered that the crest would have made a horn sound. Um, the new script here just says make horn sounds. No, guys, I'm not going to do that. Sarah. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> By the way, hadrosaurs are huh? prey animals. Their sound might have attracted large predators. If our missing T-Rexes hear that sound coming from one of your cars, they might be following the tour back in the direction of their cage. So perhaps we should uh, move on to the next stop. Yeah. Yeah. Quetzalcoatlus is the largest flying animal to ever take to the sky. It lived in what's now Texas because everything is bigger in Texas. It's named after the Quetzalcoatl, the Aztec feather serpent deity. It had a wingspan of 36 feet. That's the same as a small plane. Standing like it is here, it was the height of a giraffe. But would weigh less than 600 pounds. That's a lot, but it's incredibly light for an animal of this size because it was doing everything possible to be as light as possible, including having very hollow bones. This is necessary for it to achieve flight. Quetzalcoatlus was actually not a dinosaur, but a pterosaur. Pterosaurs are a family of flying reptiles that lived at the same time as dinosaurs. Like many, but not all pterosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus had no teeth. Unlike our missing T-Rexes who have very large teeth. Now, if you have any other questions about the creatures you see, go ahead and text that question to 844-DINO-411 or 844-346-6411. The big carnivore in here is Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus is a close relative of T-Rex, roughly half the size of a fully grown T-Rex. Albertosaurus is named after the Canadian province of Alberta, where almost all of the remains of Albertosaurus have been found. This makes Albertosaurus a Canadian dinosaur. And if you listen very carefully, you can almost hear it apologizing. Sorry about that. The other dinosaur here, Anzu, was named after a Mesopotamian bird demon. It is a large North American oviraptorid found in the Hell Creek Formation of South Dakota and had a beak with no teeth. Anzu is relatively a new discovery and scientists are still trying to learn more about this creature. 
Make sure to pause your audio tour until you reach our next dinosaur scene. In this scene, we have a group of dinosaurs called... What you doing Come hanging on for that dinosaur like that? No, please. She just ruined my whole entire video. Ceratopsians, or horned faced dinosaurs. The ones in this scene include Titanoceratops, Cosmoceratops, Duracosaurus, and Brachyceratops. Now, there are two families of Ceratopsians Chasmosaurians and yeah. Centrosaurians. Now, Chasmosaurians have two prominent eye horns above their eyes and a very large frill. Centrosaurians do not typically have prominent eye horns and tend to have smaller frills, but sometimes they have some rather ornate horns coming out of those frills. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Ceratopsians or any dinosaur, you can text your questions to me at 844-DINO411. That's 844-346-6411, and I'll be happy to help. This armored dinosaur is an Kylosaurus also known as Fused Lizard. What? And Kylosaurus was armored from head to toe with bits of bones on their skin called osteoderms. They are known for having a bony club tail, which was used to swing back and forth as a weapon to deter predators. Scientists have even found a T-Rex fossil with a broken leg that was shattered at about the same height as an Ankylosaurus tail club. This suggests that Ankylosaurus could fight off a T-Rex and possibly even win. Slight the animal here is a Pachycephalosaurus, meaning thick-headed lizard, named after his thick domed skull. It is often depicted as being used to headbutt each other for dominance, but some scientists think it is more likely used for display and that the large dome didn't grow until much later in life, which has implications for the next dinosaur in this scene, Draco Rex Hogwartsia. And if that sounds like something from a Harry Potter book, that's because it's from a Harry Potter book. The name actually means Dragon King of Hogwarts because its skull looked a lot like the skull of a dragon. There are some who think that as this dinosaur aged, the shape of its skull changed. And that what we're really seeing here is a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus. But we won't know for sure we'll until honest. more fossils are found. I've got great news, everyone. Our brand new head security, Lisa, has managed to locate one of the T-Rexes and lure it back to his area. Well, we see That's yet. great news because T-Rex is one of the most common favorite dinosaurs. So that means we can actually talk about the T-Rex, the Tyrant Lizard King, while we have one of them here to look at. Tyrannosaurus Rex have the most powerful bite of any land animal, between 8,000 and 12,000 pounds per square inch. They needed such a powerful bite to crush the bones of the prey, or even tear through the roof of a car. The powerful bite wasn't the only trick that T-Rex had of its very short sleeve. It, bigger than that. it also had something called a septic bite. T-Rex had very short arms, so it couldn't brush its teeth. <laughs> that means its mouth was filled with bits of its last meal, filling its mouth with bacteria. When T-Rex went hunting, it would sometimes bite into prey that got away. If that happened, some of the bacteria from T-Rex's mouth might infect the wound, causing the prey animal to get sick. T-Rex could use its terrific sense of smell to track that prey down. Uh, let's get out of here before that other Rex picks up our scent. On to the next area, the Triceratops. Park Ranger and Marty can tell you all about them. They're his favorite. Make sure to pause your audio tour until you reach our next dinosaur scene. And finally, oh, here at my so favorite much dinosaur, the Triceratops. The cool thing about Triceratops... No! The last T-Rex is in with the Triceratops' pen, and he's eating the Triceratops! Are they oh, dead? No, folks, this is terrible! 
That's my favorite Triceratops. Lisa, we've located the missing T-Rex. Lisa, do you copy? Oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> well, since we're here, Triceratops is an herbivore from the end of the Cretaceous period. That's the same time and place that T-Rex lived. Now, Triceratops means three horn face for pretty obvious reasons. Scientists used to think that Triceratops used the frill on the back of its head to defend its neck from T-Rex. That seems like it would make a lot of sense, but there's actually evidence that when T-Rex did eat Triceratops, he would sometimes bite down on that frill and pull the Triceratops' head right off. That meant it was less of a shield and more of a pull tab on my favorite dinosaur. But that crest was still thing. there for some reason. Most likely a display to attract mates or to scare away rival dinosaurs. Wait, I think that T-Rex is starting to notice your vehicle. Better make like a tree and bark out of here. Well, the good news is, at least we're not going to see anything scarier or with a bigger bite. Yeah, right. And now for something scarier with an even bigger bite. Megalodon. Megalodon is the largest shark to ever swim the seas. It is believed to reach up to 60 feet in length and had rows of hundreds of teeth. These teeth would sometimes fall out and be replaced with new teeth, similar to sharks today. Megalodon teeth have been found on every continent, including Antarctica. For centuries, these teeth were thought to be the petrified tongues of dragons and sea serpents. What they actually were was no less scary. The good news is that Megalodon is definitely extinct, despite what some TV shows and movies would have you up. think. While the ocean can be treacherous, Megalodon is not the danger in it. At least, not anymore. Hello? 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 Jurassic Quest security liaison. Does anybody copy? Whoa. I'm okay. It looks like our guests made it out safely too. <laughs> Be sure to let uh, the guests know that they can leave reviews of their right experience on Jurassic Quest on, Facebook on. Page. You gotta take the, uh, and on the Open Trip Advisor. Oh. I know it helps us. Yeah.